guys are so prone to getting kennel cough, I decided to do kennel cough in dogs. So, you know, we didn't, this wasn't a recording, so we have the Nozo, the fawn boxer, I'm trying to tell the audience that's watching this later, and Maverick, the brindle boxer in class, and the Nozo is a male, are they both castrated? Yes. Neutered? Okay. And uh, the Nozo is one, and Maverick is 2.5, and that reminds me, if anybody has an animal or a pet that's going to get neutered or spayed during the semester, some of you haven't seen those tissues, ask the vet to st freeze the tissue, bring it to class, and we'll show everybody else, okay? If anybody wants it. I've got, I've got like a dog uterus in my office. I've got a, actually, I think I told you I have a human uterus. I can bring these things, but if they're fresh, they're actually better, and you know, because you know, the stuff I have is in preservative, and it's monochromatic. That means it's all, you know, kind of blanched. Oh, no, sorry, it's not um, hooked up that way. It could, but I didn't hook it up that way. And the scientific name is the infectious canine tracheobronchitis, or what I've known to call it working at a doggy daycare. We pretty much just call it the common cold for dogs. Do you want to want to tear the last word apart for me? Tracheobronchitis is inflammation of the trachea and bronchi. Excellent. And as you see on the next slide. <laughs> I see. Okay, good. I should just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and it's just a highly contagious respiratory disease. And all the different causes of the possible um, disease are these different bacteria right here. So you have the Bordetella septica bacteria, the canine adenovirus, the parainfluenza virus, and the canine respiratory coronavirus and mycoplasma. So when, um, when you get a dog vaccinated for kennel cough, is it protected against all five of those organisms? I don't know. I'm not familiar. I do not believe so. So I know there's all different types of strains of kennel cough. Okay. So, so that's why, I mean, they recommend the vaccine, but there's so many different strains. Like right. I said, these guys, Maverick has gotten it five times. Five times? Yeah, every time it runs through my daycare. Okay. I'm guaranteed that Maverick okay. is going really, to Okay, really, really. Okay, because I know it's Bordetella is a, is a big one, because I think that's what they vaccinate for. I just didn't know if in that vaccine if there are other organisms. Well, I know they have a um, flu virus. Okay. But some... I'm now that's I'm different, sure. right, than yes. kennel cough. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. There are multiple different ways that you can get it, that the dogs can get it, one of which is airborne. So pretty much once it comes into our facility, it's there for a while. Any dog that is susceptible to it, more than likely they'll get it, even if they aren't in contact, <coughs> direct contact with the animal. But it also does happen to, through direct contact, so playing with another dog, nose to nose, and or contaminated items if they're playing with a ball that has been contaminated. There's a possibility for that bacteria to be on there. And they could get it even if they aren't playing with the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are multiple different places to get the kennel cough. Um, these guys have both gotten it at a daycare facility and um, boarding facility, pretty much the same thing. Or you can get it at dog parks, training groups, or dog shows. Pretty much anywhere where a large amount of dogs are in the same area. And my neighbor who owns a uh, Karen Terrier got it from the groomers mm -hmm. area. And unvaccinated dogs, if you're bringing your, un your unvaccinated dog in, there's a very good chance if the bacteria is in the area, they will get it. Um, young puppies, just because they don't have a um, complete or a robust yeah, immune system, 
just yet. There's a chance that they could likely get it in older dogs and dogs with a compromised immune system. So that's where I think possibly these two, where just with like the shorter face and like the harder time, like harder respiratory issues or more difficult respiratory issues with the short snout. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that they're more prone to get it. I'm not completely sure. Most of you can't see uh, Denozo, but Denozo is sleeping with the bull penis in its mouth. <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> so the common symptoms are the cough, runny nose, and sneezing. You can see in that picture, you can kind of see, like, I don't know, it's just more of like a hacking cough. Like a lot of the times when both of these guys have gotten it, they were hacking up white, foamy, mucusy, you know, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then more severe symptoms or more mild would be the lethargy, not eating, and fever. And usually they get these symptoms three to four days after exposure to the bacteria. And Denozo had all those basically. I mean, Denozo was the one with five times? Maverick. Oh, Maverick was. So Maverick. did Maverick do all that stuff? Maverick. Later? I'll explain his okay. Okay. situation. Okay. That was kind of at okay. the end once you see his video. Oh, okay. Video. Great. <laughs> and the diagnosis anytime I've ever taken these guys to the vet, they kind of knew right away just from that hacking cough or feeling right around in their um, throat. That's kind of the physical examination that they do, just to know that they do can do have it. And with this guy, Denozo, they have taken x-rays and blood work to confirm that he had it because he had a very severe case. Uh, when you take it to a vet, how do they like make sure that other animals don't get it if it's airborne? Right, and that's an excellent question because I don't remember Monday I said hospitals, human hospitals and vet hospitals are are where the super bugs are, right? And that's why, when I was your age, a lot of people went in for operations and they were there for two, three days in a hospital. Now they try to do it almost as a drive-through. You know, it's outpatient, you come in, you even maybe not even get the surgery at a hospital. There's like surgical centers and stuff like that. But, so that's a good question. How, how do you, if you're running a vet clinic, how do you minimize that cross contamination, I guess you'd call it, right? So anytime, usually I'm pretty good about figuring it out immediately with the hacking cough. And I tell them that they have, or will tell them that Maverick has kennel cough. They'll actually take me in at Pittsburgh in Lafayette. I go in a side door quite oh. often. They take me straight into one of their like quarantine rooms. Oh, that's nice. okay. So that's usually. Anybody have any comments? Pittsburgh. That where you work? Okay. That's how we do it too. We usually have a couple rooms at the end of the building that are usually for kennel cough or parvo or something, parvo. and they we have a side door and instantly mop that whole hallway too. And what do you mop it with, if I may ask? Um, usually you know? bleach. Bleach. And what percent bleach? Anybody got the recipe for that? Because you know, with disinfectants, if you use a real strong, that's not as good as more dilute. I mean, do you guys know that? Like yeah. with mm -hmm. ethanol. Weren't we talking about that the other day? 100% ethanol is not as good as disinfectant as 70% ethanol. Maybe it wasn't this class. Yeah, I've got three classes. So, But if you do something too strong, it's not as good as if it's more dilute. So anybody got the recipe for the bleach? Bleach was excellent, but what's the recipe? I mean, how many tablespoons or ounces per gallon? Anybody know that? We'll have to do that. It's, there's a certain recommended, you just not pure bleach or Pure alcohol. Pure alcohol is not as good as 70% alcohol. Isn't that weird, in a sense? Are you looking it up for us? Yeah, I just like Googled it, and okay. it says half a cup of 5.25% bleach per gallon. Okay, half a cup per gallon, and I think most bleach is at a concentration you said, but you'd have to verify that. Half a cup and, and then a gallon of water, basically. Thank you. See how we're like a teamwork here? Oh my gosh. So most of the time, any when I know that Maverick has it, I haven't taken him into the vet the past few times. My kind of rule of thumb is if he is still eating and acting fine, 
I don't take him in. If you, if the time that, like, if he doesn't eat, that is the first time that I'll take him into the bed, just because he's had it so many times. And so then I will quarantine him from daycare for two weeks afterwards, after he stopped the last day that he stops coughing. And um, I'll make sure he has plenty of water, he's eating fine, and he's resting. That's kind of more the mild, if they have very, just like mild form of it. If they have a more severe form, then I will take them in. And sometimes they'll give us medication the vet has actually prescribed Robitussin before to ease the coughing, and it did work very well with Maverick. And then other times we have gotten antibiotics if there is a bacterial or multiple bacterial infection. How do you get them to take that? Does that not taste bad? It's very difficult. The, <laughs> Good answer. He is probably the most difficult dog to pill in the world. And it was actually a liquid form, liquid form that I got. And so it's pretty much, I just kind of have to do it like I would pill him. We have to hold him really still. And I open his mouth and pour in the liquid really quick. Now, could break. you do a syringe full of the liquid and then not have a needle, of course, and then stick it to the back of the throat? That'd be much easier. I think that's how, you know, no needles though, obviously. You just fill up the syringe with a certain amount and then you put it back in their throat. Okay, good. So, you can you wrap up in about a minute? Yeah. Okay. So, prevention is the vaccine. There's three different types. The intranasal, the oral, and the injectable. The intranasal is where they, in that picture, where they take the needle off of the syringe and <coughs> inject it into the nose. The oral is a type of pill. I believe Maverick got the oral the last time that we went. Now, I think oral can also be liquid. Mm -hmm. Can it? Yeah and injectable. Here is the last time that Maverick had it, just kind of showing you the hacking wet cough that they had. It might play sideways, that's okay, we can hear it. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, some computers do that. Do you have sound? I don't know how much I have sound. Okay, I can turn up the sound for it. Okay, I'll see. Okay, okay. And then this is the last time that Dinozo had it. He's only had it once, actually, about two months ago. And mm -hmm. He acted fine and everything. He had one bad day of hacking. He was eating and playing fine, and so I just kind of bypassed it. I kept him, kept him away from daycare for about a week. And then the next week, he actually start, um, we had to rush him to the vet because he got pneumonia, which is one of the things if you don't treat it, which is my fault. And so he actually had to have a hospital stay at the vet for, it leading to the pneumonia. Okay. We know what they say. If it's mm -hmm. not one thing, it's the other. <coughs> Are you ready for questions? Sure. Questions, comments? Here we go. I'll let you point to people, but I'll point it to her first. So go over here. Um, as far as the pre prevention and the vaccine, um, the injectable, is it IM intramuscular or is it like IM, IV? Or subcutaneous. Anybody know? Um, the protocol that we had is we started out with puppies, we would do the intranasal, um, it's most effective that way, and then uh, the injectables in uh, IM. Okay. IM, yeah, okay. More so here, later. Yeah, now I, I know, uh, I think, I can't remember I told this, because I just bought two puppies a week ago, two border collies, and uh, Brittany is a vet, I, I won't say her full name, but she's wonderful, she's been in my class, she's, oh, you need a recommendation for her. A good vet, she is incredible. But anyway, they gave the uh, oral liquid uh, portatella, and she said she likes that better because sometimes when you do internasal, then they sneeze, mm -hmm. and if they sneeze, they might expel it, some of it, the portion. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole bit thing about vaccination failure. 
you, you vaccinate 100 animals, 100 animals are not protected, and they're protected to, to different degrees. So there's a whole big thing about that. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we won't go there. But other questions, comments? But that's what we're doing. We're all here to do this. If not, I'm going to shut this.